In this video, we'll go over the parameters and see what each one does and how to best use them. If you hover the mouse over a parameter, it will show a little tooltip, giving a hint about what it does. Let's start at the top with the noise pattern. There are three different patterns and each looks different. Ultra Volume Metrics gets its fog detail from an RGB volume texture, where each color channel has a different noise pattern. Next, we have Shape Type. By default it is set to Sphere, but we can also select Box. In our current scene we don't see much difference, so let's get another actor and exaggerate the effect for demonstration purposes. We scale it down a bit. Now let's increase the opacity so that we get a better look at the fog. The sphere shape starts to become visible. Now let's change it to a box shape. To make it even more clear, let's look at our next parameter, the shape edge falloff, and make the edges of the fog harder or softer. Let's demonstrate with a quick example. Here we have a creepy hallway that we want to fill with fog. Let's scale it to the size of the hallway as best as we can. Not bad. But now we go to the room right next to it and see that our fog is coming through the wall, which is not what we want. So let's change it to box shape and scale it to the exact dimensions of the hallway. And now it's perfect. Next up is local space coordinates. By default, the UVW coordinates are in world space, meaning that when we scale, move, or rotate the fog the noise pattern will stay in the same position. When we enable local space coordinates and scale the volume, the fog itself scales with it. When we rotate the volume, the panning direction or the direction in which the fog moves also changes. When we rotate the volume diagonally, the fog also moves in that direction. You may notice that when we turn off local space coordinates, the noise scale changes. That is because the fog pattern now scales with the scaling of the volume. In world space coordinates, the pattern always stays the same scale unless we change it with the noise scale parameter. Local space coordinates are also very useful with ultra volumetric spline actors, but we will go over that in another video. Let's move on to distance fields. Before we can use this function, we need to make sure generate mesh distance fields is turned on. So click on edit project settings and search for distance fields. Make sure Generate Mesh Distance Fields is turned on. It will ask to restart your editor. In Unreal Engine 5, it will be turned on by default since Lumen makes use of it. Let's go ahead and activate Use Distance Fields. Our fog seems to have mostly disappeared. It now follows the contours of meshes. We can visualize distance fields by going to Show Visualize Global Distance Field. Let's select one of the distance field presets to instantly get a nice result. With the distance field height parameter, we can adjust how far out from the meshes the fog will appear. Next, we move on to distance field contrast. This parameter takes the fog and distance fields and add contrast to it. The closer we get to minus 1, the more contrast it adds, and the closer we get to 1, the more uniform it becomes. This is a sensitive function, so adjust it gradually. Let's adjust it till we like what we see. Most of the process of adjusting these parameters comes down to personal preference. After adjusting a certain parameter, it's usually a good idea to come back to other parameters and see how things have changed. Opacity does exactly what we expect, it changes the intensity, or visibility, of the fog. There are limits here, and pushing the opacity to very high values can lead to less than desirable looking fog. Next up is self-shadow amount. If we remove all self-shadow from the fog by setting it to zero, we end up with a true-to-life realistic-looking fog, but it doesn't look as interesting. Of course this is all down to artistic preference. 
the value range here is 0 to 1. Where values closer to 1 can also lead to very unrealistic looking results, and sometimes even black fog. With the self-shadow contrast, we can adjust the softness of the shadow. Where zero is a very soft, almost indiscernible shadow. And one is an incredibly sharp-edged shadow. Next is self-shadow from directional light. You might have guessed it, but for this option we need a directional light to be present in the level. To better show this parameter, I've set up another ultra volumetrics actor. Now, when we move the sun with control L, we can see that the self shadow adjusts in relation to the sun position. Let's turn it off to see the difference. Next is noise scale. The three values here represent the X, Y, and Z coordinates. The closer to zero, the bigger the pattern becomes. With noise contrast and noise multiply, we can adjust how the noise pattern looks. It takes some experimentation, but if you want to be on the safe side, values between 0.5 and 2 are generally good. With some tinkering, I managed to get a pretty decent result. Which brings us to our next parameter, panning speed. Which is essentially movement speed. The three inputs represent the X, Y, and Z coordinates, just like the noise scale parameter. Let's set them all to zero to completely stop all movement. These values go both in the positive and negative range, where negative values simply reverse the direction. If we increase both the X and Y value in relatively equal amounts, the fog will move diagonally. I almost always think it's a good idea to also have movement in the Z, or up and down direction. This adds a lot of variety to the fog and makes it look less static. If you are unsure which direction the fog is moving in, we can enable the debug panning direction checkbox, which brings up a giant yellow arrow pointing in the panning direction. Changing the panning direction will update the arrow's direction in real time. Let's continue with rotation speed. This parameter makes the fog rotate, though not necessarily around its axis. In this case, we are lucky and it looks quite nice, but I recommend setting the X and Y panning speed to zero and using local space coordinates to be absolutely sure that it rotates around its center. Let's scale it up a bit, so it really looks like a more menacing vortex. As with panning speed, setting a negative value reverse the rotation direction. Let's continue with color, perhaps the most easily understandable parameter. Fog doesn't always have to be fog, change its color, and suddenly it is a poisonous gas or something found on an alien planet. Emissive color injects more color into the fog using the emissive channel and the material, which means that even under low light or nighttime conditions, the fog can still be visible. Normally volumetric fog works best when light interacts with it. In the absence of light, it usually becomes invisible. Let's make our sun go down to create a nighttime scene. In this case we still have some light coming from the fires surrounding the statue though. Let's bring back our sun, 
so we can continue and better see what's going on. This never gets old. Our next parameter, sine pan, is perhaps the most unusual. It injects a sine-like pattern into the fog. This parameter is best used on fog with a very large noise scale. So small numbers. Let's adjust the noise scale so we can see the effect in more detail. One of the presets uses this effect. Let's apply it and see it in action. Let's move on to God rays. In this environment we have various objects breaking up the light coming from the sun, which creates a more visually interesting fog. Let's jump to another environment, to better illustrate this parameter. Here we have the Electric Dreams environment, another free environment you can download from the Unreal Engine marketplace. The link is in the description. I've added a cinematic camera and changed the sun angle to scatter more light into the fog. There are two ultra-volumetric actors in this scene, one used as ground fog, whereas the other is higher up. When we increase the god rays amount, the fog tends to get more dim, so it's a good idea to increase the opacity. With the god ray scale, we can adjust the scale of the rays. Generally in bigger open areas a larger scale works better, as a smaller scale tends to become repetitive. Let's jump over to another awesome environment. You can find the link in the description. Here we have a nice forest on the edge, which breaks up the fog and creates natural god rays. But when we change the sun angle, the fog looks quite plain over the lake. This is an ideal use case for the god rays parameter. Let's scale up the god rays amount, and as before, increase the opacity afterwards. That looks much better. Let's move on to distortion. I have added another ultra volumetrics volume and gave it a red color to be able to clearly visualize what happens when we change distortion parameters. I think it's safe to say that this lake doesn't look safe to swim in anymore. The distortion scale changes the size of the UV distortion. With the distortion amount parameter we can distort the UVs in the X and Y coordinates and with the distortion Z amount we can distort the fog in the up and down, or Z direction. Notice how our fog now has a wave-like motion. Let's try another example, to better visualize the X and Y direction as well. The conditions at the lake have worsened, more unhealthy looking fog has arrived at the lake. Distortion patterns have different strengths, so you might want to adjust the distortion amounts after changing the pattern. And last, we have the far fade distance and near fade distance. Let's start with the near fade distance. This parameter determines how far away from the camera the fog should start. Let's decrease it first. The fog is now rendering closer to the camera. Let's increase the value so we can see how that impacts the fog. With the far fade distance, we can determine how far from the camera the fog will be rendered. Let's decrease it to bring the far end cutoff point closer. 
One thing to keep in mind is that the view distance in the exponential height fog will override the far fade distance of all the ultra volumetrics actors in a level. Let's try it out. Let's take a quick look at a parameter mentioned in the getting started video. The scattering distribution parameter in the exponential height fog. Here we can see it makes a dramatic difference on the appearance. <laughs> 